So it seems that the first rule about talking about 3D printed proxies for 40k models is not to say where you've got them from. Maybe not very helpful for newer players that want to find out where to find designs, but let's talk about why yesterday I spent around about 6 hours making a big video about 3D printing, released it in the early hours, and then promptly deleted it off the channel. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd just do a quick follow up to last night's brief video release, talking about the topic of 3D printed proxies for Warhammer 40k models, which then at one of the creator's requests I decided to take down. Obviously this one tends to be a bit of a hot topic with strong opinions on all sides, so I'll just go briefly over what the video was, why I took it down, and a few of the other takes and side issues that people were talking about in the comments. 3D printed proxies for Warhammer 40k armies are certainly a big cottage industry that's sprung up over the past few years. 3D printers are cheaper than ever, and quite a lot of people have been tempted to jump aboard. If you've got somewhere ventilated to store it, plus take the little bit of time and troubleshooting it takes to get things going, it can be a really interesting way to get access to a whole bunch of different sculpts and things, other than things that you might buy from Games Workshop or other retailers. It's perhaps particularly tempting for creators to try and target things that could be potential stand-ins for Games Workshop's miniatures. Given how expensive Warhammer is, at the moment you could literally buy entire 3D printers for the same cost as a Combat Patrol. And then from there, at least cost-wise, you could produce resin miniatures far cheaper than Games Workshop's plastics would sell for. It's not for everyone, but lots of people like it. As a result, it seems to be a fairly common thing that lots of creators out there will make things that are on a similar sort of scale and level to Games Workshop miniatures, maybe kits that are at the same scale and quite clearly represent something that could come from the 40k universe, but make their own sculpt that's entirely legally distinct from Games Workshop's miniatures, often showing some really quite cool creativity on the way, and just market them as generic miniatures that you could happen to use in your miniature war games should you choose to. It isn't like Games Workshop's the only one, for example Grimdark Future from One Page Rules is perhaps one of the most notable systems that gets cited when it comes to alternatives for playing different games to 40k. For a video idea, as a result, I thought it might be interesting just to take a look through a few of the more common ones that sometimes get used as 40k proxies in more casual settings, obviously not allowed in things like Games Workshop official events or their stores, but that's not really an issue to plenty of people playing casually in people's garages, basements, or local gaming stores that are friendly to them. I also thought it could be an interesting enough tie-in with current 3D printer sales going on as well, there's Black Friday deals on most of the major producers, big discounts off 3D printers at the moment, and I thought it might be fun to mention some of the deals going at Elegoo at the moment, which I'll leave a link to down in the video description and talk about a little bit more at the end of the video. In any case, the video that I made and released basically took a look at each 40k faction, and I just googled and researched a whole bunch of miniature making 3D printer creators that could plausibly be used to stand in for one faction or another in 40k, and talk about a few nice things that I liked about their alternative designs. My initial thinking was that most of these guys should probably be safe, if they're making legally distinct minis that don't exactly copy Games Workshop's ones, then they don't really have much of a leg to stand on, and particularly if they're not explicitly marketed for sale for Warhammer 40k, or using any clearly Games Workshop names like say Intercessors or Adeptus Auroritus or something, that Games Workshop could take issue with. If someone makes a whole bunch of Cadian Imperial Guard, I can see why they'd have issue, but it'd be kind of ridiculous to say that no other creator can make generic infantry units with energy weapons, though I'd say there are perhaps some creators that toe the line of what they can and can't get away with a bit more than others. The other initial reasoning that I had was that all the information is in the public domain as well, everything included in the video was easily searched by me, and I'm definitely not an expert in finding these things whatsoever. If I found all of this within the course of the 6 hours or so it took to make the video, it seems kind of unlikely that Games Workshop wouldn't be aware of these creators already. So I was kind of taking the video as a just general review of things that are on sale out there on the internet, and some hobbyists might have trouble finding them or might not be particularly aware of certain niche creators. Games Workshop can and do find these already, and they certainly do send out cease and desist letters to people who they think have overstepped the mark. And I didn't honestly think that talking about any one creator in any one video would necessarily change things all that much. It's also kind of interesting that promoting things that people on sale usually tends to have a bit of a positive effect, more people will find the creator's designs and they'll get more business, though it does seem that in this particular case you want some people to know about them, but not too many. In any case, last night when I released the video, I was deciding to monitor this one just in case there were issues, 
In general, it certainly seemed to go down well enough with people who wanted to see it. Compared with plenty of the other videos on the channel, it got a lot more attention over the first half an hour or so. It definitely seemed to be a subject that people were interested in finding out more about. It also had a 96% like to dislike ratio, which in general is okay. It's a little bit lower than my channel average of 98 point something, but perhaps implies that the majority of people out there didn't really think that anything was too disastrously wrong. However, perhaps the obvious feedback in hindsight was that lots of people said you're probably helping paint a bit of a target on a lot of the heads of these creators here, and you should probably take this video down. There were a fair few references to a recent Tyranid old sculpt creator that got targeted by Games Workshop after someone posted a YouTube video about their models. That does seem to be something that's happened, though I guess we wouldn't actually know whether it was cause and effect or not, seeing as Games Workshop do plenty of cease and desist letters to other creators that aren't featured on big YouTube videos or anything like that. I was thinking about making a channel poll as to whether or not the video should stay up or not, but then I noticed at like around 3.50am that one of the creators featured said that they'd just rather not have the extra attention at the moment, and would it be possible to cut them out of the video, also messaging me at the same time. They were very polite about it, and just explained their point of view. Apparently they have been the target of a cease and desist letter in the past, and would just rather not have the extra attention. Given that they'd got in touch really quite quickly within an hour of the video being released, it seemed at least somewhat likely that at least one of the other creators might well have the same sort of feelings about things, so I just decided to pull the video completely, even if it might have annoyed some of the people who wanted to watch it. Basically the video went down within an hour of it being published, so not that many people got to see it. I guess it didn't technically have to do it, given that it is all information that's completely in the public domain, and people who have these things basically on full sale for the most part, some maybe slightly obfuscated behind Patreons and things I guess, but it did seem like it was the right thing to do, as I really didn't want any individual creator getting in trouble just for the sake of me making some content about some fun alternative 40k sculpts. It was definitely a bit of a painful decision to make, given that the video took over 6 hours to make, quite a big commitment when I'm usually making videos twice daily. But I think that even if I was just coming from a purely self-interested perspective, it just really wouldn't be worth the short-term gains for long-term just annoying a whole load of people, and more so if one of these creators got taken down by Games Workshop at some point in the future, people might rightly or wrongly blame me for that, and that's really not a situation I want to be in. Again, I do kind of suspect that given Games Workshop can easily Google this, and I'm sure their IP infringement teams devote a lot more time than I do to the subject, they're probably well aware of most of these creators, but perhaps any more moves to make them any more mainstream just aren't particularly helpful, and I can certainly understand why they'd not want to have any more attention than they need to. In any case, it isn't the biggest deal in the world, definitely a bit of work lost, but I just released the next one on the schedule anyway, talked about the 10 weakest armies in Warhammer 40k, another one that I had lined up, and I'll have to catch up a bit over the next day or so. A few people did ask me as to whether or not I could just trim out the creator in question and re-upload, but honestly I think given the potential for that, I'm probably not going to do that unless people specifically say that they want to have their miniatures featured in a video like that, either myself contacting the people in question, or I guess if you are a 3D print creator and you would like to have miniatures featured in a video similar to that, and you're happy that you're in no danger of Games Workshop going after you with IP things, then feel free to let me know down in the comments. A couple of creators did already mention that in the community post that I followed up the deletion of the video with. I must admit it was all a little bit stressful, though it was interesting to just see some of the dynamics and forces at play here, with people having all sorts of strong opinions about the subject. I think perhaps one of the weirdest things about the entire situation is that it's a weird grey area for the people who are making the models. If you are one of these creators who is maybe going right up to the acceptable line where Games Workshop might take issue, then they have to kind of try and do two things at once. Their miniature studios will want and need some people to find out about them, otherwise they're going to get literally no sales of the files that they're creating. But if anyone goes and shares their designs and things too widely, then that's also bad for them as well not wanting to stick their heads above the parapet and catch any more flack than anyone else trying to make 3D printed miniatures in the industry. Other comments talked quite a bit around the IP and copyright system just in general. It is a system that favours the big guy. Some smaller creators might not have the time funds or know-how to rebuff an unjustified claim by Games Workshop, so if they sent them a cease and desist letter that isn't entirely justified for some miniatures that are legally distinct enough not to fall foul of the rules, they still might feel pressure to take down designs and potentially go out of business if that was all they were doing. It's a tiny expenditure on Games Workshop's part as a massive great big multi-million company, 
but a disastrous expenditure that will be needed for one of these smaller creators out there. Just from general feedback, I understand that they have been handing out some cease and desist letters recently. Some have been contested successfully by the creators, but some have not, and some have chosen to skip out the fight. I think it is also important to consider Games Workshop's point of view in this as well. Copyright and IP and things generally tend to incentivise defending IP. I might be slightly mincing terms and things, but I know you can at least lose some rights to certain designs or names and things if you don't defend things when people make use of them. So say for example, like with the fan animators situation, if they had decades long periods where they just allowed everyone to do what they wanted, it could conceivably be hard for them to defend in the future if they wanted to stop any one person who'd really overstepped the line in a big way. I was just blatantly ripping them off left, right and centre. As a big company, it just doesn't really make sense for them to play lax with basically their most valuable asset. They aren't really anything without the Warhammer IP. So while it does suck for a few people trying to make some cool sci-fi models out there, it is perhaps understandable that Games Workshop will be pushy. It would honestly be far more surprising if a big company acted in any other way. In any case, after taking the video down, I did put up a community post just to roughly explain what I'd done and why I'd done it, as understandably people are kind of annoyed if you tease them with a video upload that they might want to watch, and then you suddenly take it away from them. One particularly interesting comment that I got was from a nice Mr. Garin of the Maker's Cult. Massive thank you for reaching out and getting in touch like this. He basically said from their point of view that they were fine with the video as it was. I was absolutely happy to feature Maker's Cult models on the channel as part of the review if needed. As a result, I thought I'd just talk through a couple of their lines, so a few people can see that part of the video at least. I'll see whether I do get a chance to basically revisit the topic and remake the video. It would kind of depend on having enough creators to actually showcase things, though I might do a bit of a talk through of a bunch of creators in the future. So again, if anyone does want to have their miniatures featured like the Maker's Cult people here, then feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'll know that your guys' ones are safe to talk about without provoking Games Workshop's wrath. There are plenty of players who are very well established in this game at the moment, and comfortable with what they can offer people without overstepping the mark and bringing down cease and desist letters on themselves. If for whatever reason that they do change their mind, I will cut out the following section and I'll be able to in future videos. It's probably worth making them a bit modular like that so I can take down bits of a video without taking down the entire thing. In any case, I thought we'd just take a quick look at three different ranges from the Maker's Cult. They really do have quite a lot of armies going, so feel free to check them out yourselves on the makerscult.com webpage or their Patreon page. They've got a fair amount of various different sci-fi designs that could be used for quite a lot of factions, maybe things like the Imperium in particular, plus some rather specific stuff that would do nicely as Astra Militarum and Tyranids in particular. First up, I quite enjoyed the Jade Coalition miniatures. These ones will be quite nice for various different Imperial designs, I think. I quite like these combat frame ones, which might be acceptable proxies for things like perhaps Astra Militarum Sentinels, but a bit more of a dreadnaughty coffin type feel to them all very big and stompy and armed with some fun missile launchers. Here's a set of infantry from the range, Jade Coalition Scouts, sort of carapace type armour and energy weapons. I do quite like the Cyclopean style helmets that they've got there, all very sinister. I feel like the Maker's Court people perhaps do particularly well with Ogre and Bulgren type models, great big ab humans with melee weapons and things. These look pretty awesome and again very very sinister with those helms there. Wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of these bad boys with the swords and hammers. Another sub range that I really quite liked within their options were the feudal guard ones. Again, some great big chunky ab human knights with grenade launcher type things. I really like the helmets on those and looks like they could be great for guardsmen from a feudal world. Plus, they've got a Lord Equilius who could be used as a Lord Solar stand in. They've got quite a range of tanks and things with weapon systems that could represent a few different 40k proxies. I do quite like the vision slits on these ones, again just nodding to a feudal nature with the feudal knightly sort of nature with a tank that looks almost like an entire knightly helmet, I think that is very very cool. And they do have a few other sub ranges of guardsmen as well, the Valakor are all very gas mask and world war 1 type infantry vibe with some heavy artillery, could make for some nice Krieg. And they do have some universal guard miniatures such as these ones which are maybe a little bit more generic sci-fi armour. Could be useful enough to stand in for some rough riders, maybe if you didn't like the designs for the more knightly armour of the Attilans perhaps. Finally, the other range that I've talked about on the channel once before that I did really really like were the Iron Hive Swarms Made of Metal. These ones could be absolutely great for Tyranid miniatures. 
They have miniatures that could make some pretty fun Death Leapers or Hive Tyrants here. I do like their Swarm Lady model with the great big enormous clockwork axe type thing. That is very, very intimidating. And they've also got some mechanical Subterrax Borrower units that could be nice for a Trigon perhaps, unless the Swarms aren't neglecting either with some mechanical Lavas. Overall some very nice ranges and very well executed. I have had a lot of recommendations for them in the past. So anyway though, there's the brief story about my ill-fated 3D printer video and why it got taken down very quickly. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. While we are on the subject of 3D printing though, I will just mention that one of the channel's backers, Elegu, has their 3D printer sale going on. Just for any of you who might be interested, then they have plenty of things at fairly good discounts at the moment. They do tend to have things semi-permanently on sale, so things tend to go down a lot more than their normal asking prices. But the Black Friday ones tend to be the absolute best of the year, so I suspect that this is probably the cheapest time to get into 3D printing should you be inclined to. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description below. Elegoo is one of the brands that is most commonly used by people printing for tabletop war games, though obviously plenty of other good ones exist, and they also have sales on at the moment. The sale deals last until the 27th of November it would seem, so feel free to check them out down in the video description via the affiliate link if you're interested. Any sales through that do help support all specs tactics too. Just for a couple of examples of the common models on sale at the moment, the Mars 3 Pro 4K printer is one that I often have seen recommended. That one in theory is up to around about 60% off at the moment. Even from its discount prices, it's usually on the market for around about $200. So it is entering the 3D printing sector for really quite a cheap price, I think. Kind of weird to see these go cheaper than a Games Workshop Combat Patrol box now. Though obviously if you want to get miniatures out of it, it will cost you a bit in resin as well, plus acquiring design files and some more time troubleshooting and being safe about resin. I see this one as a solid entry level one. The build volume is a little bit smaller than some of the rest, but can be worked around with multiple print runs. There's also a 6K version on the market now for a little bit better resolution if that's interesting. Otherwise, perhaps one of the other ones that I've heard people talk about the most is the Saturn II. The 8K version's all the way down to $320, usually on sale for around about $360 to $400. And this one is basically the same thing, but a bit bigger. The big advantage meaning that you need less runs to print up any one squad or vehicle. At $320, I consider this a nice budget mid-level option. It's generally quite compact compared with other ones of its size. And then again, there is a higher resolution one on offer as well. The 12K one, I believe, is $380 right now. So maybe not the highest increase in price for a bit more resolution if that's desired. As always, with getting into 3D printing, I will mention the usual caveats as well. You absolutely need to stay safe when you're handling toxic resin, which isn't a chemical that you want anywhere near your skin or your lungs. Use gloves, wear a mask, and keep the printer in a room that's ventilated and also away from anywhere that anyone's spending too long in, and dispose of any resin-soaked IPA that you use to wash the miniatures safely. It is a bit of a hobby in itself, can take a bit of time and troubleshooting. Reports are very varied with some people having no problems and some people having lots. And also bear in mind that 3D printing proxy models might not always be appropriate. Obviously won't be allowed in GW official stores or events or anything like that. And it wouldn't be turning up to the local gaming store with nothing but 3D printed models without supporting them in purchases in some way. Different stores might be more or less receptive, but in general if you want a place to game then you should support them as well. Obviously it's not going to be for everyone, but I feel like for a lot of people it's pretty exciting to basically be able to run your own little miniature factory and get access to a whole bunch of cool designs. I'll leave a link to the sale down in the video description in any case. So anyway, let me know your thoughts about the thorny topic of 40k proxy printing. Look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments as per always. And feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, while I'll certainly keep a few more videos like this coming. I'm sure we'll return to the subject of 3D printing. And I might try and get that video back on the go if there's a few more people who are interested in having their miniatures showcased and are secure that they can do so without bringing down Games Workshop's wrath on them. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics is primarily supported by my Patreon page, and I'll leave a link to that down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.